was an evening of revelry and conviviality. How do you do? Ah, what's this? Jealousy? No matter, the table is laid, the wine is poured. Romance has blossomed. We are to be married. It's shaping up to be a rather good evening. Until... Spirit, commune with us and move amongst us. We bring you gifts from life into death. Don't break the circle! I have found birth, place, desire, and destruction. Here's to a weekend in the country. Cheers. Coming soon. Welcome to this special interview. I'm Keith Isles and... I'm William McLaughlin. And we're both independent filmmakers representing Movie Heaven, Movie Hell and Premier Scene. Movie Heaven, Movie Hell is a podcast that looks at the good and bad of genre films and television and related media. And Premier Scene uh, covers red carpet news and interviews, as well as additional featurettes. For this episode, uh, we were lucky enough to be at Fright Fest Glasgow last weekend, and we're pleased to welcome two special guests of the podcast. Um, we have the producer and the director of Here Comes Hell, a comedy horror film, producer Olivia Loveridge and director Jack McHenry. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Hi. Thank Hi. you. Nice to be here. Nice to have you on. And what, what did you think of Glasgow? Yeah, we loved it. I mean, it was actually my first time up there. Um and I mean, it's always great to go to a new place when you've got, you know, a, a base there, a, a sort of someone to welcome you there. And uh, no, the Fright Fest guys are, are brilliant. And um, yeah, it was it was a fun weekend. Yeah, it was great. It was um, it was a kind of a mixed thing of being absolutely terrified and really excited at the same time because <laughs> it was the first time uh, showing the film to a basically a paying audience. So that was quite scary <laughs> yeah and real hardcore horror fans so yeah it, it was quite nerve-wracking but um yeah it, it went down well good well we loved it didn't we william oh it was wicked uh, absolutely standout <laughs> film and one of the things that i was talking to keith about was the kind of resonance of watching films that are made in places that you can recognize and identify with and uh sort of characters or people that you can uh, recognise and identify and I think that's one of the big bonuses of the British film and uh, you know seeing it it's just more relatable in some respects to me than sort of yellow cabs and skyscrapers in New York and stuff so I, I really liked it I thought it was brilliant right cool we, yeah I don't think we've had that many yeah. people say it's uh, relatable but, no, but I, know, I see what you mean because <laughs> yeah. it, it was it, I, we were trying to make a something that felt very British in its sense like um uh, the influences, like apart from horror, were things like um, the Elan comedies of the nineteen forties and fifties, and they had a real sense of uh, a, uh, kind of a British uh, identity, and that, that's kind of what we really wanted in this one. So I don't know if that came across, but yeah, totally. You get you get the homage and the style. I think is is very unique, and it's not an American style. I don't think. Yeah. So you can see kind of influences of other things in your in your film as well, kind of Evil Dead stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll get into that, and we'll get into the uh, the film itself and all of that shortly. But before we do, um, I just wanted to ask you guys. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about uh, your background, what what you've done previously, uh, how you come to know each other, uh, and things of that nature. Basically, your journey up until <laughs> getting to the point of being able to make your uh, make this feature. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I'll, I'll go first on that one. I mean, this is it's sort of the first thing that Jack and I have done together properly. Um, Jack can tell you about what, uh, yeah. what he's done before, but um, this came about um, through, I get a sort of quite <laughs> offhand initial discussion about whether we could just make a feature film <laughs> in quite an unorthodox 
um, way in, in a similar style to how Jack's made short films in the past for very for sort of no budget. We thought how how would it work if if we used a a similar sort of I suppose quite informal process to make a feature film for a very low budget. So a sort of like uh, set out what we want to do and figure out how to <laughs> figure yeah. out the practicalities after which uh, in hindsight you know you always go oh god I <laughs> would have done that differently would have done that differently but I feel like actually if we hadn't done it in just the very like grab the ball by the horns and just go for it if we, if we hadn't done that tactic it probably wouldn't have happened so it was a real I suppose set ourselves this this challenge and then had to figure out how to make it yeah um work. well to kind of go back to the uh how we know each other we um so me ben the composer olivia and the co-writer alice all actually went to school together we were all um kind of went sixth form together and made, like we just kind of made short films and things like that and put them on youtube and kind of just like with our mates just made them in our back garden and sort of figured it out like that and this felt like the kind of a culmination of like that like how much can we do just using our friends and Mm -hmm. kind of start working out like how can we make this into a bigger thing and so that was the kind of the 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 idea of it in a way that answers your question at all (laughs) yeah yeah no no, absolutely it does and um i mean Again, we don't want to spoil the film for uh, yeah. for, for the audience, uh, for our listeners or anything like that. But, I mean, essentially, um, y- you know, one of the things that struck me about it was uh, you totally embraced the um, sort of a mixture of sort of comedy, horror, uh, you know, from, from the sort of old 1930s thrillers you know with the whole sort of yeah. black black and white aesthetic and the academy aspect ratio and the sort of heightened performances from the actors and stuff you know into this sort of haunted house type story but then you also had sort of the gore and effects along the sort of like you know peter jackson or sort yeah. of evil dead type stuff so uh, i mean can, can can you sort of um maybe expand on that a little bit and sort of talk about the the, the basic uh, overview of what the film is without the spoilers yeah. and yeah. Uh, your influences to get it to that stage. Well, yeah, um, the idea sort of came about from uh, watching uh, David Lean's Blythe Spirit, the one with 19, I can't remember the day actually, or 1940, I think. And there's a really great seance scene in that. And um, it was the idea of like, what would happen if this film did change uh, rails and did follow on like being scary because that sound scene is quite uh, scary but it's also a comedy and it was almost the idea of taking that and very British tropes of almost Agatha Christie-esque characters and seeing what happens when you throw them into a totally different genre almost um, and see how they deal with it but at the same time you have all the kind of the funny things of them all trying to stay like stiff up a lip uh so, like the whole social hierarchy and all their old like relations and things like that playing out during like the horror and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think I when we were first talking about it, I really liked that idea that um, Jack and Alice had that it should be that a lot of the humour should come from what happens when people with these very British uh, sensibilities have to then um, contend with essentially you know, all hell breaking loose. Yeah. Um, and the sort of, yeah, the funny moments you'd get from those sorts of people having to actually figure out how to act and try and save themselves. Because they're and, all useless, really, yeah, when it comes down to like, they just sit around, drink, <laughs> sit around drinking. All they do is so. drink and smoke. So when, like, it goes bad, they really have no idea how to deal with it, which is funny. Um, and also just... Uh, it, it, I I really like horror films, which I mean, this is a very short horror film, like well, just short film, but it's only like seventy five minutes. But I really like movies that do take your time to build up your characters. So, like, we do sort of for a short film this length, we do allow 
you just to hang out with these characters and it was kind of that was quite scary watching out with an audience because we really do like let people like just hang out and have dinner with these people and stuff like that and i enjoy that as a um a viewer when in horror films when you get to like just get to know your characters and things like that so then halfway through it it, it, it totally derails and changes into a different movie and entirely <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, that totally works. I mean, the characters are very amusing. Um, it's very well written, um, definitely, and right. uh, that worked. And also, in terms of the length of the film, um, we we we've done a review podcast myself and William uh, on the whole of the films at Fright Fest, and a common complaint even though we really enjoyed all the films a common complaint is we felt some of the films were overstayed their welcome slightly were a tad bloated maybe a bit longer than they needed to be by 10 minutes or so so it was really refreshing that your film not only was massively entertaining but it was it felt just about right in terms of the uh in terms of the length, you know, to, to get enough character development and story and spectacle in, but without sort of, you know, at, at any point getting boring. Right, William? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And you want to end a film sort of still reeling from the experience and not... Being on a very tight schedule. <laughs> yeah, so a tight budget couldn't afford to outstay our welcome. <laughs> but that was, as like our first film, that was something we were very conscious about, like people are already going in and like already being like uh we're already up against it in a way like they don't know what we've done or anything like we're nobody so the idea of um we don't want to like overindulge um i mean it's it was the it, it just yeah that was what you're saying the don't want to outstay your welcome maybe i don't yeah know. i think also probably the fact that jack was as well as co-writing it and directing it you're also editing it hmm. so there was you know you your um critical eye was there the whole yeah uh, i can't that was, i'd say there was like another 10 minutes but we kind of like just had to like get to the get to the meat or cut up the fat in a way mm. i want to ask 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 you about something you were mentioning earlier about screening the film for the first time in front of a paying audience um Based on how close you both were on the project um, to it, and if you're uh, editing and doing the VFX and directing, um, what what do you learn um, when you watch it with an audience? Or do you like? Could you talk about the experience that you like felt when you were watching it at Fright Fest? Yeah, uh, China. Yeah, because what? Um, well, uh, good things are people laughed at more things than I thought they would laugh at, which was great because I was really worried that people wouldn't get the kind of, especially in the first half, the kind of, um, the more, uh, the, the kind of, I wouldn't say it's subtle humor, but the idea of like, watch, you are sort of watching a 1930s movie and people kind of really got behind that. And that was like one of the biggest things I was worried about is like, if they wouldn't find this people funny, will they yeah. get it? And like, so people were laughing and say the dinner scene and stuff. And that was really, I was really happy with that. Um, also what I really liked was when people started getting killed, like the crowd started cheering, which is awesome. <laughs> so like, as soon as like the head started blowing up, people were cheering, and things, <laughs> which, which is awesome, <laughs> which I was really happy about. Um, sorry. Yeah. I think watching it with an audience reaction, you, it, it does sort of, um, uh make you think you shouldn't worry so much as long as you've got that strong you know we were always really clear on what our idea of it was and as soon as you see an audience getting that you go oh I shouldn't have worried so much about that essentially you know that if you've got the strong yeah. um concept like jack always did that of course people will will get it like it, it is a um but it was still yeah really terrifying before <laughs> i was it was i was so scared the whole day <laughs> yeah no I, I i i can imagine and um uh but but the thing is I, I think one of the things you did so great with this is i mean i'll be honest you know there's all types of ho horror films and you get a lot of different types at fright fest which is one of the reasons why that festival is so good and generally, my sensibilities lie more towards the sort of dark, serious horror stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah. in the case of this film, because you embraced it completely, 
you know, you absolutely embraced the comedy of it. And, you know, the film was consistent. It knew what it was. And I was really impressed with the, um, you know, you, you, you clearly know your, your movie history quite well because, you know, you embraced a lot of the, you know, visual style and whatever from, you know, some early Hitchcock films through to, like you mentioned, the Agatha Christie type stuff. And, um, you, you know, even in places, you know, touches of like hammer horror and stuff. So, um, you, you know, were those obviously influences for you? Yeah, that was um, one of the main reasons we, why I wanted to do a film like this is because I'm such a, I'm more of a fan of movies than I'd say I'm a filmmaker in a way. So like it was a, from paid like day one writing, it was like I really wanted to film a scene like in Hitch, like uh, like Psycho S, if you know, like, um, and I love like rear projection and I love like um, movies that use models, like model houses and things like that. Like that was all part, that was built into the script and like almost one of the sparks for making the movie was to be able to like really play on these uh, genres and images in a way like known images but then maybe like twist them ever so slightly occasionally like so I wanted to sometimes subvert expectations and things like that but that was definitely like the reason to uh, one of the uh, big ideas was to make this movie look like a black and white 1930s movie um it was yeah that was the big idea for it and how did you guys go about, I mean, I remember at Fright Fest, you both talked about how you intentionally didn't shoot in black and white, uh, you intentionally did shoot it black and white so that you didn't have the option to, to go back. Uh, once you got into the edit, what kind of, and this is a bit geeky, but what kind of processing did you do and how long did it take you to get a look that you thought, this is what we're after? Yeah, um, we actually, because I did, yeah, I sort of, it was me and, the composer basically were the post-production on this. So um, we saw just, I, I, God, I don't really know how long it took. I'd say it's like... Uh, it wasn't that long. It wasn't that long, so I started it editing. Over the yeah, it was over the summer, just I didn't go outside. Months, yeah. yeah, a few months <laughs> um, working late. And what we, what I really wanted to do is that's why we shot it in black and white was, um, yeah, again, I don't want to go too nerdy, but uh, I didn't want, I wanted it to feel as if we shot it on like 35 mil film stock. Um, and I didn't, so that's why we shot it in color. So the idea was like, we can't mess around with the image too much afterwards. And it was, there was a lot of post work to make things look more old fashioned, but like there was a line we wanted to get, like this is like something I was like, I don't want to do the whole kind of scratched up looking effect on post. Yep. I wanted this to look like it was a 1930s film that has now been remastered now, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And now it's being projected like on 4K. I was like, like that was the yeah, kind of... I didn't want it to look yeah. like, yeah, if it had been like pulled out the ground and just projected, it'd been like cleaned up and now been shown, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Uh, it makes total uh, sense. Uh, meta, but like... <laughs> No, no, I, I mean, I'm loving the the fact that, like you said, you, you know, you guys are film geeks more than uh, filmmakers. And I think uh, if you can combine those two things, um, you know, that's very important, uh, which which you are. Um, Olivia, so I, I want to ask you, in terms of, you, you, you know, the film is quite ambitious in its scale, reg regardless of the, um, you know, the budget. I mean, I know essentially it's like, you know, seven characters in one location, but it's still a period piece. Um, you, you know, how how did you, I mean, how was it to produce <laughs> something like this? Um, you, you know, can you can you give us a little bit of a, a producer's yeah, yeah. journey? Yeah, um, it was, I suppose, quite an unconventional one in that I, I'd never produced a feature film before. Um, my producing work had been actually more theatery stuff. I'd done some stuff in Edinburgh. Um, but then, yeah, me and Jack started talking about the idea and I really loved it. And because from the beginning it was like, you know, it'll be one location. If we can find the right location, then for really, for really cheap. Or maybe I think when we first started talking, we were like, maybe we can get that for free. Maybe we know someone. And then obviously things escalate and you quickly realize that 
that's not going to happen. <laughs> Even calling in every favor in the book, um, you've got to pay for something. So it was a real, um, I'd say really, if we hadn't found the location that we did, um, we you know, things would have, we couldn't have really, yeah. we couldn't have made it, um, which was this brilliant, but very eccentric, um, location. So then, you know, I guess like, like with all producing, once one thing falls into place, you, you know, you just, you sort of have something to start with and, and you start building it. And once you've got one block, it's easier to get other people on board, other things on board. We, we did call in a lot of favors. I think yeah, everyone did it for nothing. Yeah. No one. <laughs> yeah, it was all that. Uh... It, it would have been a lot more daunting if I'd been doing it, say, with a team who were purely, um, who were just, you know, colleagues rather than friends and people I'd known for a long time. You know, the, the fact that everyone was sort of really um, so on board meant that. You know, although I was sort of sitting there going like, right, I've got no money and a very big challenge ahead. Um, it it was difficult, but it was never, um, it never felt so out of reach. Um, but that was also because I think we were doing it quite unconventionally. We didn't have a strict, strict schedule yeah. because that would have been too hard. You know, if you're doing it on this level, I think you just have to be really flexible and... You have to not. You have to have a fair bit of faith that you will just find a solution. I think. Yeah, like um, especially near like other certain scenes, we had to be very liquid with the kind of like, okay, like maybe this scene we're going to have like kind of take out out the script and like rewrite it halfway through and like go, like this is the kind of scene we can do because there was like things that like were way out of budget in the first draft, so we have mm. to kind of go. There was a whole sequence with an octopus in the fog, I remember. And I was like, no, we can't, we can't afford that. Like, we can only have, like, locked doors. <laughs> like, so That's it's your like, next okay, film. Like, yeah, yeah. Choose your, you have to, like, choose your battles. Uh, yeah. I'd say one, one thing I um, definitely learned is that um, uh, you can <laughs> – the first draft of the script, I probably should have been a bit more um, <laughs> uh, said no a bit. Yeah, more. scared of. <laughs> you eventually reach the same point. You just you just say no a bit later. <laughs> oh, excellent! But and what about? I mean, um, you know, on that as well. Uh, another big consideration is um, the special effects in the film, which uh, again are quite ambitious. Um, and mainly practical from what I understand or, or um, and I just wondered whether you know you guys could talk a little bit about the the, the special effects you used and who your sort of influences for that style of uh, of, of gore and horror might be yeah um, so the special effects from the beginning again because we were making a film that was like influenced by um, kind of films from like the 1930s and 40s, like kind of like classic ones like Frankenstein and things like that. But then uh, later, like more like uh, Evil Dead and the Thing, um, we wanted it to, it had to feel as if it was right, you know, like fat, uh, fitted in with the movie. Like CGI wouldn't have felt right in the context of the movie. So it was always like, okay, how do we um, get this in camera? Uh, so we, that was always from the beginning getting that so it was like it was just like me and like my brother sort of just made some um just went to like um a pound store at uh halloween and <laughs> bought all the kind of like arms and fake masks and things like that and sort of just kind of worked out from there like uh building fake heads that we could kind of work out how to blow up and things like that and it was all very it was all very diy um but the the, the yeah the influences were like really like the thing and stuff like that and it, i wanted to have that almost you know it's not real if you know what i mean that kind of it like and if it kind of like when uh there's a sequence with someone walking who's dead and things like that and it it, it has a uh a, a in camera look if you know what i mean and that's what i wanted i didn't want it to all feel very sheeny and clean i wanted to feel like it was captured on the day with those because there's a certain charm and things to those kind of movies that I don't think you get with um, CGI. Well, I think like we, what 
um, you were saying, keep like it's all the the consistency. You know, it just mm. it it fits with the film. But I think to to me, or maybe and to the like lay person talking about these effects. And I remember when I was talking to Jack at the beginning, you know, he'd just sort of say, oh, no, I can do that. I can do that. And these are things like like sort of octopus hands or or heads falling off uh, or like uh, heads getting blown up. And Jack's going like, oh, I, I can do that. And to me, it would be so sort of out of my realms of possibility that I could make something like that. But because like, in Jack's short films – for example, and I guess just when you guys were growing up, you always did <laughs> that sort of stuff. I mean, you know how to make those things. Happen, I did. I but... I didn't really know how to put any of it off. I just lied and said mm. I could, <laughs> and then I was like, no, well, I'll figure it out. And so I just had to sit in my room like making stuff <laughs> and go like, shit, how's this gonna work? <laughs> I think often, oftentimes, um, you're seeing things like the thing. Uh, are an influence. I think actually sometimes when you've got a constraint uh, where you can't just throw money at your problem, I think that's where your creativity uh, kind of becomes the the crucial element. And certainly with all the special effects and stuff, the style of the film, the fact that it's black and white and it's a period piece, it totally worked. Um, and I think when we were talking about the audience reaction earlier, that was one of the films that had the strongest reactions because you really lent into it and didn't hold back and showed, you know, the most extreme kind of uh, grotesque stuff. But you did it in a way where even if you didn't have mega budget or you couldn't do it with CGI, you were finding these practical, uh, expressive, creative solutions. So I think that really carries it. It works really, really well. Thanks. Uh, that, that, yeah, that was a real, like, that was a uh, fun thing to see. that Because when you're editing it, you kind of do get a bit like... Um, used to seeing these things so it was really fun to sit through and like watch people reacting to kind of certain set pieces and things like that um but that does go back to kind of the budget of it like there was a sequence again i don't want to spoil things but there's a sequence near the end which totally came about because we didn't have the budget um we wanted to have a kind of more of a, a descent sequence and we couldn't get afford a location so we were like we need to think more like how, how do we um get around this so we were like okay so we had like sat down and we were like, all right how do yeah. we do this how do we essentially do it in a studio <laughs> and a different way so we kind of that's when the, the, that fog sequence came about and i think it actually made it better it, it made it more like it gave it a trippier secret like a totally different flavor to the rest of the film like and that was down to budget so it is useful to be have restraints because it made us be more creative mm-hmm. yeah I mean, de- definitely the um, the horror and gore effects in this were uh, they, they they really fit the tone of, of of the film, you know, and the style of the film, and were very effective and very amusing for the audience. So that was good. Um, presumably, there was some digital uh, visual effects as well in this. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Like. Uh, yeah, you uh, know, uh, more than hopefully you'd think, you know, like, uh, but just sort of a lot of like, say, like muzzle flashes and like certain bits of blood and things like that. But I re- we tried to have as much in camera, but yeah, there was like you always have like occasionally do like a green screen shot, and that was again like I was just on my computer, like I I, I am not a visual effects artist, um, so I did a lot of like YouTube searching and just kind of like. Like it was like right after effects how like google uh green screen techniques and things like that there's like a big chunk of a character which we had to film on green screen totally and i was like i don't know how to do that but youtube is a really useful thing for uh low budget filmmakers <laughs> <laughs> like it's amazing you can do it you learn everything from that it's just <laughs> how long you stay up <laughs> yeah yeah no absolutely i mean I'm, i i think it was all pretty seamless to be honest um and you know that that worked really well so um you know congratulations there um i feel that we one other aspect that we definitely need to talk about though on this is your cast and the casting because again everybody in this seemed to totally understand what kind of movie they were in and they all seemed to embrace it and have a blast but 
you know, it really was kind of the heightened performances uh, similar to what you saw in some of those classic films. So can you talk yeah. a little bit about the uh, the actors and the casting process? Yeah, um, I would say if we didn't have as good an actors that they are, like the film really would just fall apart. Like we, you are watching them for the first, I'd say, 25 minutes in a way or up to half an hour without much horror happening and you are just watching them talking and interacting and stuff and i think it's down to their performances that like engages you and you you you're what we always wanted was you to be happy to hang out and just watch these people and the, the way those uh, the actors did it was like amazing they totally got it was such a thin line between uh getting the right kind of ever so slightly heightened performance and then making it make fun of that kind of acting and like the whole movie we never wanted to feel as if we're poking fun at these movies like i'm not kind of it, it, it's a very it's a it's a love letter to movies not a uh laughing at if you know what i mean and not for sure the, yeah and those guys like they were all like they we we, we watched um Blight Spirit and Evil Dead one evening, all of us, and like just to kind of show like uh, how actors used to, especially in, for the first half, like how actors used to move, and that was a really important part of it. And they were all just they, um, yeah, they made the movie totally. Yeah, and in terms of them being the right fit for mm. it, I think you wrote it with a couple of them already in mind. Yeah. Um, uh so I think probably when they read it, they could sort of see a little, because they, so Margaret Clooney and Tom Bailey, two of the cast Jack's worked with before. And then the other three, we, I think we'd seen them all actually in various theater. Yeah. Um, apart shows. From, apart from um, Tim, who we uh, met, yeah. just met. Um, Through Margaret. So we, yeah, we definitely, you know, got very close with with all of them and yeah did spend you know with well, we Jack all, spent a lot of time yeah like getting them to to get it essentially yeah we did a big table read uh, one evening where kind of like it was kind of i wanted to do kind of like a Franz ford coppola evening where like because you always hear about him like having evenings with like his cast and stuff so it was like kind of a, an idea of doing something like that where we all sat down with candle lit and read the read the script and kind of did, because I wanted to make sure that you, even as much as it's a heightened thing that you do understand, like all these characters hang out, have hung out before and they know each other. And because it was such a tight schedule, they might never have met before. So it was really important to make it feel as if there's a bond between them at, mm. at some point. So you and get just, that good bitchiness. But yeah. So that's, yeah. Some kind of love. <laughs> yeah. And we all literally lived in this like uh, kind of, shack no kind of like thing uh <laughs> yeah, machines, yeah literally on top of each other like so we couldn't help but like you know get to know each other so uh, hopefully that comes through oh yeah it does and and that sounds quite exciting actually um, i'm loving all these film references that you're making as well because they're all the sort of things we love so uh that sounds awesome um and, and and you got, apart from the table read, did you get much uh, actual rehearsal time prior to shooting? I, I had only one. a couple of, um, only a couple of rehearsals. Was it one or two? Yeah. Um, in terms of having everyone there, I think we maybe just had one full session. Yeah. Um, because, again, you know, we had to be, yeah, flexible to every, I think, um Could Everyone had various, you know, other jobs on the Yeah, because they, 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 they weren't being paid for this. So, yeah. like, we could, like, it was all, that was one of the really hard things was finding a, um, when getting everyone together at the same time, even just for yeah. the shoot is always so hard. Yeah. The, more you, the more we sort of think about the the more we really were so lucky. <laughs> really <laughs> lucky. And then that they really <laughs> loved, like, that, that they had a good time because yeah. people of a different disposition might have, you know, not got on board with that whole sort of quite immersive filmmaking yeah. process. Uh, yeah, but when you've got no budget and time, you know, you've got to have literally everybody on board, you know, yeah. wanting, wanting to be as passionate about it as you guys are. And um, it sounds yeah, like really from are. what you were saying that they were. So, yeah. 
yeah, they've really um, made it and just, yeah, no, I, I have, because we didn't have a lot of time to shoot and just, uh, we would be kind of, I don't know, we'd be trying to get through like at least six to seven pages a day. So we didn't really have a lot of rehearsals. So it was kind of like they were hitting their performances like on take one. So it was amazing to just be like sitting there going, oh God, the movie's coming together. This is amazing. <laughs> And do you think because you you got um, you know the cast you've worked with some of them before, does that let you kind of hit the ground running a bit in terms of if you've got a really tight schedule, um, you want to get a lot of coverage, and you're in a, a challenging location? Does that yeah. kind of lend itself to the directing process? Yeah, there was well. Also, this goes back to um, especially for the first half, the style of shooting, like in the first half. It was like we really wanted it to feel again like it was a 1930s film so we had to like or 40s like so the the setups were very kind of like try get everything in like a wide or a master or just a close-up so it was like everyone got on board of that kind of style of acting so it was almost like to, we would rehearse a scene all the way through uh like four pages or so and would get it all in a wide like that and then we'll just like go in for close-ups and it was like almost like doing a theater piece and i think they really enjoyed that because it wasn't like we're just like running in doing little snippets they actually got to like properly perform for like four minute long takes and that was really like great to watch and i do think it helped them and it really helped me because it was always like if we run out of time I could just show a whole scene in a wide shot and it still feels like accurate to the kind of movies mm -hmm. we're trying to make. If you know what I mean? Like there, there's not a lot, those movies weren't like cut really quick. It was, you know, you can let shots breathe and things. Yeah. Developing kind of developing shots. And it is a kind of, you definitely notice in modern films, sometimes how fast they're edited in comparison with even just stuff from 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, Big difference no i really liked at the start uh when you were talking about um just building up in the, the characters and the sort of situation and, and what they're all doing i loved the beginning i was already in before anybody started experiencing any horror stuff um, <laughs> i think that that's that's for me what made it work so well um and your characters aren't you know they're they're not all immediately likable people if that's <laughs> fair to say no, no um, that was i it was kind of that was always from the kind of uh, I uh, from the beginning. It was you, you wanted to make it like you don't ever really know who you like or can trust, or, or you know who might live till the end. You know, it was that kind of almost like hateful eight esque kind of thing. Like um, you never know who's gonna like die or what. And I mean, like yeah, there's they're all they're, they're all slightly despicable in some way yeah they're quite caricature yeah yeah definitely and yeah. i think i think i think that works really well in the sense that when you go and see a horror film you know that that, that a lot of the cast are going to get it <laughs> um, and I, I couldn't decide you know whether like christine or george or uh freddy whether or not i wanted them to experience some sort of bad uh you know come up and start not yeah. because it's really enjoyable to see and watch it all unfold yeah that's yeah, great because the character play was 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 really good you know between them and uh, like you said it's it's uh, you kind of let us get to know them uh for better or for worse um yeah. you, you know quite early on in the film and um y you know as you said you saved the, the the horror uh as it were the horror aspects to the to the second half and again the pacing of all of that um felt spot on really so uh so yeah good good job I oh, think because that was always a kind of slightly nervous thing. It was like, yeah, we are, we're holding back. But like I, an influence on that was kind of like uh, from Dust Till Dawn, if you know, like the kind of idea of like you're watching sure. one movie and then suddenly like, what the hell is going on now? Which it kind of does. Like I always think like that is sort of what horror is, though. You're like you never expect anything bad to happen, and then suddenly like you're just in your house, and then something bad. If you know what I mean? Like so that was like the kind of like. Uh, the, the take on it of like horror should come from absolutely nowhere at any time. Yeah. Slightly making fun of that whole, of the ridiculous setups you get where, where, you know, you're sort of like, Oh wow. I wonder what's going, yeah. you know, when characters get themselves into these situations and, um, <laughs> you know, you're like, well, that's all, something obviously is going yeah. to go wrong there, but then this is just a very 
yeah, you know, it's literally just they're having a dinner party. Yeah, and, and they're just nothing. idiots. <laughs> yeah. And is it is it right, William? I'm sorry, Jack. That one of them was your um, mum. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, my mum. Uh, we key, were, key part, key Madame Belrose. We are uh, we were writing it, and um, she was like, "Well, well I better be in it." So we're like, okay, okay. Well, she, she'll okay. She is, a, she is an act. Yeah, she was an act. Yeah, she was an act. <laughs> and so then I was like, okay, you're going to be in it. We're going to give you a massive speech, and you're going to be a really important part. So <laughs> don't mess up. So it kind of like you know, yeah. So, but that was it was really great, just because you're so experienced and like just being able to work with, like yeah, film work with my mum was great. <laughs> That's really cool, and we won't we won't do any spoilers here, so that's fine. Um, so the 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 next thing I'm really curious about because I've I've got to ask this is, you know, both William and myself, uh, we've made films and we've worked on low budget feature films and stuff, and so we completely empathize with how hard it is to get something shot and made and looking this good in the first place, but the thing is that's almost like just the beginning of the work and you, you know yeah. get it getting the film seen and getting it you know distributed and all that's a whole nother job so obviously yeah, well totally done right. on fright fest but i mean how's how, what what where where are you at with this currently what's what's the uh um, what's the plan yeah so i guess i guess one thing that was really nice is that we made it thinking with with a not a huge pressure or like undue expectation of, of where it was going to go it was very much like look this is our first feature let's make it and um i guess play it by ear a little bit you know obviously enter it into festivals but um then take it from there so getting it into fright first yeah was obviously brilliant because that you know, there are a lot of people there who you really want to see it and a lot of, you know, really supportive people who can kind of help guide you through this neck towards distribution. Um, so we're thinking that video on demand is going to be um, the best way to get it out there. Although it's funny because seeing it, seeing it on a big screen and with an audience, we really have realised that, it, it is sort of in its element there. So it'd be fun to do some more screenings, but... Um, we're kind of working that out, basically. Yeah, then. yeah. We're basically, yeah, we're, we've had, yeah, lots of post and pre fright fest, lots of interest from lots of nice, so nice people out there. Yeah. So, we're yeah, at the moment we've got some fest, some more festival dates um, coming up. They haven't been announced yet, but... Um, yeah, we're we're going to be showing it at some more festivals, and then hopefully this year it'll be out there somewhere <laughs> for general consumption. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it worked really nicely on the big screen for sure. But um, it's also that type of film that I could see a really awesome special edition Blu-ray available. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would yeah. be fun. That'd be the dream. <laughs> I think it's nice that you uh, that you appreciate how good it was uh, projected because I love when you see a film and it is cinematic and it is really kind of ambitious. And I think with the advent of LCD screens on cameras, sometimes people tend to shoot quite close and stuff, and I don't think that ever ever felt like that. And it does feel really cinematic. And I don't want to talk about the end, but certainly like the climax of the film was ticking all those boxes. So if you if you're showing it again in Glasgow projected, I'll be buying a ticket. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I thought it worked really, really well as a, a projected film, and I think you know it's it's part of the testament of being able to be a filmmaker now is that there are options other than uh, sort of traditional studio distribution for for people. So I think yeah. you'd have great success with it on demand as well. Thank you. Yeah. Likewise. I mean, uh, if it shows in London, um, you know. I'd see it again and obviously recommend it to loads of my friends that would definitely appreciate this sort of film. So, um, yeah. so that, right, yeah. that, that's for sure. Yeah. It'd be nice to do, do some one. screenings in London for sure. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, so have you got, I mean, I appreciate, you know, 
you, you're still on the journey with this film <laughs> and uh, yeah. I know it's a long journey and all this but have you got um you know uh, have you got any other sort of projects in the pipeline or any other plans Jack's just giving me a really wicked grin. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to persuade Olivia on an idea, which is a um, a medieval diehard action movie. Uh, which... Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I think that's an appropriate reaction. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's kind of like kind of like uh, John Borman's Excalibur meets Highlander slash Die Hard kind of thing. Uh, trying. To- <laughs> Trying to get that, trying slash to slash western. Oh, right? slash west slash yeah. yeah, a bit of Sergioni western a lot. Uh, <laughs> so trying to write that <laughs> sounds amazing. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I was sort of um, the reason I'm doing the the eye roll with my voice. <laughs> no, um, because obviously, yeah, this has gone well. I feel like it'd be nice to to try and do another horror of a slightly, you know, with a with a slightly um bigger budget but i guess just sticking with the genre mm. um you know where we can get get the similar not necessarily similar tone but you know like like the very strong style that here comes hell has sort of experimenting of of how we can translate that into um other films that feel feel really original that and and keeping that really fun yeah. So, you know, we always wanted this to be like it's a, first and foremost like a really entertaining like popcorn. Yeah, it's beer movie. and pizza kind of movie. Yeah. And so it's yeah, figuring out how we can do that again with something something else whether it's medieval or not. <laughs> yeah. Definitely horror. Something it'll like It'll definitely yeah, have be, some horror. Yeah. Yeah, whatever it is, it, it, or if not, it'd be like a very strong genre movie in that sense, because it's yeah. kind of Adventure. definitely the term. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're we're working on it basically. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, at the moment, yeah, Jack's working on the medieval script, so we've got to we've got to give that a chance. <laughs> and I, to be honest, I I am coming round to it. So yes, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And um, I mean, what about if we wanted to see uh, some of your previous films? Are, are, are they available anywhere to watch? Yeah. yeah. So um, we've got a website, which is www.trashhousefilms.com. Or, um, or you could find it on YouTube. They're on YouTube. And, yeah. And Vimeo. Video. Yeah. Just tra- uh, Trash House Films. Uh, the la- the film we made before this was called Dungeon of Vampire Nazis. So you can oh, yeah, that's, on the list. <laughs> that's uh, that's somewhere out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um that was the short film before this and then yeah. Yeah. It's out there somewhere. <laughs> I don't think there are more than one Dungeon of Vampire Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> you hope. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, I was actually watching one of your shorts earlier, uh, the root of the root of evil. Oh, uh, wow. yeah, yeah. But I'm going to watch uh, Vampire uh, Dungeon Nazis after this. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, that, they're they're not. I don't know how good they are, but <laughs> I think I think they're fun, and I think that that's that's something that gets you a long, long way um, if your film's enjoyable, um, mm. because I think it's easy to get lost in the kind of technicality of stuff and. Yeah, I, re- I like. I can't sing the praise of "Here Comes Hell" enough. Thank you so wow, much. So nice. It's really nice of you. Oh, that's cool. Well, um, you know, I think without going into spoilers, we've probably um, covered as much as we can. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's hard not talking about what happens in the film, but because it's not in general release yet, let's not ruin it for people. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. No, we we won't we won't ruin it. So, um, if I pe- mean, people can go and watch the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> and get a little. A little sense of what it's all about. Cool. Is that is that on the website as well? That's is it the website? Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else that while you've got our listeners' ears that you'd like to uh, to promote or 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 say, or if anyone wants to get in touch, uh, what's the best way? Um, yeah, I, it would be great if people go have a look at the website, which has yeah, like the trailer 
some links to past films and also details of how to get in touch. Um, it's Trash House with one H. Um, <laughs> because Trash House. Yeah. Yeah. Trash House. All one word. All one, um, one H. Um, and, yeah, they and then, yeah, just keep an ear or eye out for Here Comes Hell at any kind of festivals or things like yeah. that. When... Oh, or follow us on Instagram oh, yeah. or Twitter. Yeah, hashtag Here Comes Hell. We now have Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just hashtag Here Comes Hell, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, or at... Oh, Twitter is at comes underscore hell. Yeah, that's it. And Instagram is here comes hell. Um, get some good behind the scenes pics. Yeah. Oh, great. So there you have it, folks. Um, anything else uh, you want to add, or are you uh, are you happy? <laughs> oh, I'm very happy. Yeah, it was want... really great. <laughs> yeah, to thanks guys. for well, first thanks for coming and seeing it, and thanks for enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was... That's really nice. And, and thank you guys for, for talking to us and answering our uh, questions and, and spending the time. I know you guys are busy, so thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. No, yeah, Always. thank you so much. It was really nice to talk about it. That's all right. So, William, where can people reach you if, if they want to find you? Well, Keith, I created a new Reddit account today specifically for doing all this kind of promoting of, of the film stuff and uh, I'm working on some comics as well as making movies at the moment. And you can find me on Reddit at u slash dash w-a-s-m. And you can come and ask me questions or have opinions about what I've said um, on Reddit. Cool. And if you want to see any of my work, if you go to YouTube and put in British Isles, that's E-Y-L-E-S, as in my last name, uh, there are some short films on there that I've written, produced and directed uh, that you can check out. Um, if you want to listen to the podcast Movie Heaven, Movie Hell, that is available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and all good podcasting apps. Uh, also on Facebook at Movie Heaven, Movie Hell. Um, and if you want to check out uh, a premiere scene, uh, that can be at premierscene.net. And as I said, there are uh, red carpet interviews and featurettes available on there. So... Thank you for listening. Uh, that just leaves me to one final time thank our guests, Olivia and Jack. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That was great.